I'm going to begin by asking you a question. How many of you have experienced back pain? I'm going to talk about why so many of us have back pain. We begin our process of muscle development even before we are born. And in a baby just a few weeks old, you can already see that abdominal muscle activity accompanies head, arm, and leg movements. And that muscle training is what will allow the baby to roll, then sit, and crawl, and stand, and walk. And soon, the child will squat. And for quite some time, will squat whenever he or she wants something on the ground or more stability to play. This muscular training gets us off to a great start, despite a fair amount of sitting in car seats and carriers, high chairs and strollers, because in between, children are still running and jumping, reaching and squatting. And then, we take these amazing little bodies and put them in school. <laughs> I don't know about the chairs you had in school, but in mine, it was nearly impossible not to slump. Possibly like the one-size-fits-all chairs you're sitting in now. Even if not slumping, children sit for hours every day while they're growing. The muscles in a shortened position are adapting to being short, acting stronger, and reacting more quickly than other muscles, while muscles in a lengthened position are adapting to being long, acting weaker, and reacting more slowly. So, children's muscles are already training to be imbalanced. Sitting also alters our flexibility. We become more flexible in our spine and less flexible in our legs. As a result, children begin bending over from the waist rather than squatting to pick things up. And this only increases as they get older. And that is a shame, because squatting is very good for us. In fact, squatting helps maintain the flexibility and strength of our legs and pelvic floor, the muscles at the base of our spine that support our pelvic organs. So this change from squatting to bending over and chair sitting may lead not only to back pain, but ultimately to balance dysfunction, joint degeneration, and pelvic floor disorders. As we move from childhood to adulthood, we become stronger in the muscles that are already strong, better in the actions we are already good at, Instead of the variety of movements we had as young children, we become adults who repeat movements. How many of you get out of bed on the same side every morning? We may step into our clothes with the same leg first, reach into our closets with the same arm. Even exercise can be repetitive. We live in a modern society but we each respond differently to modern conveniences. Our height, shape, and proportions cause us to interact uniquely with our environment and to adapt to activities and traumas we've experienced so that some of us develop a healthy movement system while the rest of us develop a painful one. In fact, at least 80% of us will develop back pain at some point in our adult lives. And while chronic back pain is challenging to measure, at least 10% of us will have, an, will have back pain that lasts for three months or longer. 
If you are an adult who has pain, can you stretch your stiff muscles? Can you strengthen your weak muscles if you already have muscle imbalance? These are interesting questions because muscles are like springs. And like these springs, it is much easier to stretch what is already flexible. And in a similar way, it is much easier to strengthen what is already strong. I became interested in back pain because my back pain started when I was 19. I was an avid runner, and over a period of time where I thought, surely this slight back pain will subside, it began to take longer and longer to prepare to run and to stretch out after running. Eventually, the only time I didn't have back pain was when I was running. And finally, my back pain really escalated, and I had to stop running. Unfortunately, my back pain didn't stop. I went to physical therapy school, where we practice our techniques on one another as we're learning. So many back pain techniques later, I did not feel better. So I graduated with a degree in physical therapy and the feeling I had little to offer my patients with back pain. Then, research from Shirley Sarman demonstrated that people develop specific patterns of movement from their muscle imbalances and the interactions of their bodies with their daily activities. Research from Paul Hodges and Carolyn Richardson looked at arm and leg muscles, arm and leg movements to see which muscles turned on first and found in people with back pain, they turn on their more powerful arm and leg muscles first, where people who do not have back pain turn on their transversus abdominis, one of our core abdominal muscles first. These research findings really resonated with me. I realized that I had caused strain to my spine through the patterns of movement I had developed to allow my long limbs and tall frame to interact with my environment. I gave myself an evaluation and implemented an exercise program based on the research. And in three weeks, I was running again after seven years of back pain. Even the healthiest, most athletic individuals can develop patterns of movement that put their bodies in jeopardy. For instance, a 31-year-old who made me promise to describe him as a punker scientist nerdy person came in with severe back pain just six weeks before he was supposed to participate in the Ironman triathlon. Eight weeks before the Ironman, he strained his back, and by the time he arrived, was having difficulty standing, let alone training. His evaluation revealed that his strong hip flexor muscles had overpowered his weak core abdominal muscles. The dozens of sit-ups he did every day gave him quite a six-pack, but did not help him strengthen his abdominal muscles so that they would protect and stabilize his spine. So that's where we started. The exercises I gave him were gentle coordination movements, really, designed to help him get back in touch with his core abdominal muscles, to strengthen them so they could participate with rather than be overpowered by his stronger leg muscles. The result was that he was able to finish the Ironman with one of his best times ever without pain. As our stories illustrate, it is really important how we use our muscles. But strengthening weak muscles is really challenging, athlete or not, because our brains are in great communication with our strong muscles and not in great communication with our weak muscles. So most exercises will help our strong muscles get stronger, or at best, help our weak and strong muscles get stronger together. To really strengthen our weak muscles, we need to give those 
muscles exercises that are gentle and precise enough that they can communicate with our brain and do the m movement we're asking them to do without being overpowered by their stronger counterparts. Before we talk more about how we do that, let's clarify what the core is. We have core muscles throughout our body. In fact, every joint has precise core stabilizing muscles. Our abdominal core muscles protect and stabilize our spine. Having a six pack, like my patient, does not mean you have a strong abdominal core. The six pack, which is called rectus abdominis, is a narrow band of muscles from our ribs to our pubic bones. The core abdominal muscles include rectus abdominis, but also include the much broader oblique and transversus abdominis muscles. They all function together to narrow our waist and ribs like a corset and to stabilize our spine through their circumferential attachments to the ribs above, the pelvis below, and to fascia, a kind of connective tissue, in the front and in the back. Some people use intra-abdominal pressure thinking they're using their core abdominal muscles, but being able to make your belly firm doesn't mean you have a strong core. We use that firm outward pressure every day, all day, in fact. It helps us produce sounds like the ones I'm making with my voice. It is the pressure behind a cough, and I'm pretty sure you've felt it stiffen your midsection when you lift. But if you use that firm outward pressure to brace your spine without also using your abdominal muscles to narrow and stabilize your spine, you might not be protecting your spine from injury. Because we have each had our own unique interaction with our environment, we might each need our own individual exercise program. But there is an exercise where most can begin, and that is to activate or turn on our core abdominal muscles, which, along with our pelvic floor, are the core of our whole body. We begin with a big belly breath. When we lengthen our abdominal muscles, we send a message right from our abdominal muscles to our brain to say, hey, pay attention to me. And when we exhale, with a little bit of resistance, like or our abdominal muscles automatically turn on because they know how to help us exhale against a little resistance. So when we turn our abdominal muscles on using techniques they already know, it lets our brain be aware of their other functions, one of which is to stabilize our spine. Would you like to try it? If you can, please stand. It helps to place your hands on your torso so your thumbs feel your ribs and your fingertips feel your belly. Very slowly, take a big belly breath. Notice how your ribs and belly expand. Very quietly, notice how your ribs and belly narrow. Continue that narrowing if you can, and when you're finished and you relax your abdominal muscles, if you felt your ribs and belly expand again, congratulations, you just did an abdominal contraction. <laughs> Feel free to try it again or to have a seat. I'd like to leave you with three suggestions. First, engage your core. Practice that core abdominal muscle activation exercise 10 times a day. That's just three minutes to reintroduce your brain and your abdominal muscles to one another. Second, increase your activity. Walk. Take the stairs. If you can, squat to reach low surfaces 
rather than bending over from your waist. You can even practice squatting every time you sit down and stand up from your chair. Third, vary your movements. If you have to sit, and this is especially true for children, take standing breaks. 20 seconds every 20 minutes or one minute an hour. If your arms are in a fixed position, reach overhead or out to the side. And if you really want a challenge, begin to think of all of the movements that you repeat every day and think about what you could vary. You could begin by sleeping on the other side of your bed tonight, and tomorrow, when you get up, you'll have a whole new perspective on all the movements you're making over the day. Thank you.